this is my story. Um, before I start, I want to apologize if you hear the barking dogs. It's a pretty day outside, so all the dogs in the neighborhood are going crazy and they are just yapping away. <sighs> anyway, this is my story. Whether you choose to listen or not is up to you. I'm going to go on and do some trigger warnings. We are going to be talking about anxiety. We're going to be talking about eating disorders. We're going to be talking about body image, mental health, all things like that. So if you think you will be triggered in any way, shape, or form, please exit this video. Go watch one of our happier ones and I'll see you there. But if you choose to sit and listen, all I ask is that you please keep an open mind. I know it's very easy to judge people, so please just listen with an open heart, open ears, and understand that everything I'm speaking of is my personal feelings, my personal experience. This is how I view myself. This is not how I view other people, and this is not how I view the world. Just because I feel this way about myself does not mean I feel this way about other people or view other people a different way, and it doesn't mean you should either. But... Overall, I'm hoping that this can help someone and speak to somebody, so let's get into it. For the past few years, I have been struggling. I have been fighting a very silent battle behind the camera when everything's turned off. Um, sometimes I've shared it on social media. I'm sure if you guys have followed me on TikTok, you've seen my TikToks of me crying. I've documented my health. I've talked about mental health. I am very open about it. But this is something that I've been struggling with on a day-to-day -day basis that for the majority, I would say I keep to myself. Um, sometimes I don't even speak too sod about it. Okay, let's start at the beginning. So for my entire life, I have had panic disorder, anxiety disorder, depression, bipolar type 2. I wasn't diagnosed with bipolar type 2 until later on in life. We'll get to that. So right when I was born, like my parents knew something was like wrong. I wasn't just like an upset baby, like throwing tantrums. I was literally screaming and crying no matter where I went, um, unless I was home with just them. They didn't think much of it at the time. I was the first kid. Um, they thought that's just what babies did. When I was around 16 months old, they took me into a doctor and the doctor right away said that I probably have panic disorder. Like I was probably born with a chemical imbalance. So they knew like from the get that something was wrong, but obviously like I was 16, 16 months old. Like what are you, what are you gonna do with, a, with an infant that's just crying and screaming? And it could not be that. Like I could just be having tantrums. I could, my stomach could hurt, like who knows? Fast forward, I remember my first panic attack being in chemical garden I, rem I literally vividly remember this day because we were learning the alphabet and i remember k and q were getting married i don't know why i, I don't know what that means i i don't know why i just specifically remember those things i remember that day and i remember feeling like like i was dying now going through kindergarten and elementary school i don't know if you guys remember um if you're old enough you probably do i don't know if they do this anymore but i remember they would rate like your behavior with cards like you would have a green card if you were good that day you would have a red card most days I had a red card and it's not because I was a bad kid. It's because I was having panic attacks every day at school and the teachers thought that I was throwing tantrums. They thought I was crying and I was screaming and I was freaking out out of bad behavior. They didn't understand, um, you know, and my parents didn't understand at the time that I was just having panic attacks. Come fifth grade, I remember, um, I went to Catholic school. Um, when I was going to the school, I remember my mom driving me and the nun having to come out and drag me, yeah, physically drag me into school because I would scream and I would cry. I, I was just panicking. I couldn't leave my mom. My home and my parents were my safe space. That's the only place I felt like I wouldn't panic. It's the only place I felt like I wouldn't die. 
So it obviously got to the point where my parents realized they had to do something about it. My life wasn't functional. I couldn't go to the mall. I couldn't do things normal kids did. I had to be at home. And I had to carry a water bottle with me everywhere because I thought I couldn't swallow. Um, and that was one of my big triggers. So when they took me and in fifth grade, I was diagnosed, you know, basically with what they said in the beginning, panic disorder and anxiety. I got put on Zoloft which is like one of the most commonly prescribed medications. I was on Zoloft for about 10 years. It worked okay. It, I mean, the panic attacks still happened, but they weren't as frequent and they weren't as bad. That was my first time in my life, like receiving treatment. So it was okay. We're gonna take a big jump forward. I just need you guys to understand that I started this medication at a very young age and I'm glad I, I'm glad I did. I don't regret that. I, I needed it in order to live a quote-unquote normal life so fast forward oh what are we talking are we talking 2018 end of 2018 beginning of 2019 i felt like i was gonna die again everything flooded everything flooded in i was on so much medication and i was having these uncontrolled panic attacks that happened all day long um on top of that i truly did health wise feel like i was dying it wasn't just the anxiety i couldn't get out of bed i would stand up and i felt like i was gonna drop to the floor i I couldn't take two steps without feeling out of breath. I had never experienced something so scary in my life. And let me tell you, panic attacks are scary. They are very, very scary. This was a whole nother level of scary. I knew something was wrong. I don't remember how in 2019 I ended up in Kentucky. I don't remember why, but I was in Kentucky, me and Sod were. I was stuck in my parents' bed for a month. My mom forced me to go to the doctor. I had a panic attack that whole way to the doctor because I was having panic attacks that lasted all day long. I'd never experienced that in my life. I didn't know that was possible. It was hell, let me tell you. It was a month of living hell and I was actually convinced I was gonna die. And I tried telling everyone around me, there's something wrong. This isn't just anxiety. There is something seriously wrong. I, I thought I had some like unresearched, unknown like disease. Like I seriously thought I was like this rare case. Um, and I would go to the doctor, they'd be like, blood pressure's fine, heart rate's a little elevated because you're having a panic attack right now. But everything, everything's fine. Like medically, like there's nothing wrong. So I would have to get sedated um, with a lot of volume. That's the only way I would stop panicking. And essentially, it would knock me out. I would fall asleep. I would wake up the next day, repeat panic attacks, sedation, go to sleep, wake up, panic attacks, sedation, wake up, panic attacks, sedation. It was the hardest thing I have been through in my life. Truly, I don't I don't think that experience will ever change. I knew I had to get back home to Massachusetts. So I ended up getting home. <sighs> that was a struggle, let me tell you. But I'm talking to my psychiatrist the whole time during this. We're trying to get to the bottom of it. And she said, I think you need to get your thyroid checked. I don't know how she knew. I mean, she's the expert. So like, thank God for her. I got my thyroid checked. And that's when I got diagnosed with Hashimoto's hypothyroid so i know i've talked about this before so if you guys have heard it i'm sorry but for the people that haven't i'm gonna tell you if you don't know what a thyroid is it is the butterfly shaped gland in your neck i didn't know it existed i never heard of it before what's a thyroid and then i didn't know it was in your neck okay like i was like what like something in my neck isn't working and also so you guys know your thyroid controls everything like you need a thyroid to live well let me take that back you need thyroid hormones to live there are people that don't have their thyroid but you have to take thyroid hormones supplements because it controls your heart your lungs everything okay thyroid is important love your thyroid if you didn't know it existed just give yourself a little tap on the neck and say thank you thyroid because it's doing a lot of work that you don't you don't know about and you don't think about so the doctor told me, you know, you have the autoimmune disease, which is genetic, which means that it probably came from your mother or father. But I was like, my mom and dad don't have this. Like I made them get tested. They, they don't have it. I was like, I don't know where this came from. Like truly don't know where this came from. But basically it explained everything. It's why I felt like I was dying. And in the beginning, the doctor, like 
I just remember him so underplaying my feelings and my emotions and making me feel like I was crazy. And he was like, your level's like an eight. Like there are people at an eight that feel fine. And I'm like, okay, well my level's at an eight. And I'm literally like gonna die if we don't do something about this. That's how bad it was for me. I also have a very sensitive body. So I feel everything. I just feel everything, okay? Um... After getting diagnosed with this, I gained about 30 pounds. To put things into perspective, my normal weight was around like 138 to 140. And for me, that was like very slim. Everyone holds body weight differently. It, it's, it really is crazy. Like people can be the same weight and look totally different. So for me, 138, 140, I looked like very, like in my opinion, I looked very skinny. Like it was like, like it was good. Like it wasn't bad. Um... But it, it was skinny. Like, I didn't look 140. I would say I honestly looked about 120 when I was at 140. So that was the weight that I was always used to growing up, okay? Um, never had body image issues. Like, I was like, I like the way I look. I, I don't care that, like, 140 sounds crazy and my friends are 110. Like, I don't want to be 110. Like, I like the way I look. I'm happy. When I got diagnosed, I jumped up to, like, 167. I almost hit 170. So I gained about 30 pounds. It was very crazy because I didn't change anything in the way I ate my lifestyle. The only thing is that I was so sick. And a big side effect of hypothyroid is weight gain. So I put on all this weight. I didn't recognize myself. I tried to mask the weight with like makeup. I don't know. I don't know why I thought like doing my makeup every day was gonna like help. Like, I look back now and I'm like, good for me even doing my makeup because to this day, most of the time you guys see me with no makeup now because I don't like the way I look and I'm like, what's the point of doing my makeup? So, I'll get to that. So, I would like do my makeup and I would do my hair every day when I felt decent, okay? When I felt like I could get up and move around out of bed. And I guess I thought that that would like mask all like the insecurity I felt about being so much heavier than normal, but... It really didn't um it was a really big struggle but at the time i honestly wasn't really concerned about the weight because i was just concerned about being healthy so my number one goal was just to feel better it took me about two years to get my thyroid to a stable level once i got it to a stable level i did lose about i said 17 pounds but where i am now it would be around 15 i would say i got from actually you know what don't take my don't take my word for that i got from i got from like 167 down to like 152 my lowest so like 15 pounds okay i fluctuate from like 150 to 155 my weight fluctuates a lot so i lost about 15 pounds once my thyroid got to a stable place so i'm sitting at like 152 at that moment right now i'm like 154 like i said i fluctuate so i'm still holding about fluctuation if we're counting 155 15 more pounds than i've been used to my whole life and I started getting very body conscious because when I was sick and I gained all this weight, I was getting fat shamed like no other, like no other, like there was no hiding it. Okay, like all my comments were, is it just me or did Jules get chubby? Is it just me or did Jules gain weight? Jules is fat now. You looked so much prettier before. You were so much prettier in 2018. Now you're fat. Like, thank you. Like, I'm sick and like on my deathbed. Like, thank you very much for pointing out the obvious that I already know. That instant, like me being sick and getting all those comments, like changed my entire mind changed my entire mind and that's where I'm that's where I'm leading with this I'm sorry I don't talk about this stuff like often so when I do I don't know how to word things I'm trying my best so please bear with me I worked very hard to lose the 15 pounds that I did um but let me give you a little insight of what my mind turned into during this weight loss process things became very dark I looked in the mirror and I viewed myself in a different way that I had never viewed myself in before. I thought, okay, I hate myself now, but if I lose some weight, everyone will think I'm pretty again. Everyone will stop commenting on my body and I'm going to be okay. And also let me give you, let me give a disclaimer. I, so many side notes and disclaimers. I'm sorry. I've been doing social media for about like 11 years. I was doing Vine in high school. Comments like literally 
do not phase me. But keep in mind, I never had comments on my body, so that was one thing I was never exposed to. I've been told to drink bleach. I've been told to kill myself. I've been told I'm ugly. But like, I've heard all of that. That that ain't anything to me. Like, you can tell me that any day. But people commenting on my body was something that I was not ever exposed to, okay? And it really, really hit me different because I also know this backstory that I'm sick and I gained all this weight and I'm already insecure about it. And now all the social media is pointing it out. Like, great. So I was like, okay, my mindset is really dark right now. But once I lose some weight, it'll get better. So I see a specialist, I see a personal trainer, I do all this stuff. It takes me a long time, but I lose like 15 pounds, like I said. Great. Why is everything still dark? I lost 15 pounds, but why is all I think about all day when I'm going to work out? Why is all I think about how many calories I ate today? Do you know how hard it is on your mind? Some people are good with it. To weigh your food? Never in my life have I weighed cheese. Never in my life have I weighed chicken, okay? For the past two years, I have been weighing my cheese, my chicken, my everything. I weigh my food. I calorie count. I've been doing this on and off for two years. It is so damaging. At this point, I've become mentally broken. I wake up. I don't want to do my makeup. I don't want to get ready because all I see is that I'm going to work out later. And once that day's over, I'm one day closer to losing another pound. I'm saying it out loud and like I know it's so effed up. Like it's so, it's so effed up. I've become scared of food. I eat, okay? Like I don't, I would say I mentally have like, I have a more mental disorder with food, not a physical disorder with food because I'm a hungry girl, okay? And that's something I get insecure about too. I feel like my hunger is way bigger than everyone's around me. Like I am just a hungry bitch. Like I'm hungry, like I love food. And I used to be able to eat whatever I want, and now I have to eat like 1,500 calories a day. <sighs> so after like two years of doing this, I've just become exhausted. And I literally, I'm not proud of this, but I made a consultation the other day literally to get lipo. I didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't go through with the consultation. I made the consultation because I feel like I've tried everything and I've been stuck at this plateau of like 155, 154 forever. And before you say anything in the comments, I promise you I have. I have tried everything. After like two years, like it's like you have plenty of time to try everything. I have tried everything. I know I'm not big like that too. I also want to disclose that, but I just want to look in the mirror and see the person I saw before the sickness. That's all. That's all. I just want to go about my day. I want to eat breakfast. I want to eat lunch. I want to eat dinner. I want to not go to bed hungry. You know how hard it is to go to bed hungry? It's terrible. Oh, it's so bad. It's a terrible feeling. I want to eat a slice of pizza and not be afraid. That I'm going to gain all that weight back and then back up at 167. <sighs> this is what I've been going through. Things have gotten darker than I've said. Um, I am getting myself help. I talked to my psychiatrist and I'm going to do everything the right way. I'm going to do everything the healthy way. I have a game plan, a healthy game plan, because I know that I can't live like this anymore. And I know that I don't wanna live like this anymore. And I would never want anyone else to live like this. If someone else told me they were like this, I'd be like, what, like why? So, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> um, just know that after talking to my doctor yesterday, I feel hope. I feel hope that I can feel like myself again. I feel hope that I can look in the mirror and be happy again. I'm working on loving myself. I said a little bit of hope and she said that I should have a lot of hope. <laughs> so I don't think I'm gonna have to go to bed hungry anymore. And hopefully soon I love myself more. If you're going through any of that or anything that I described, you're not alone. Just know 
I'm working on bettering myself and I hope if any of you guys are going through anything you work on bettering yourself I know how damaging eating disorders can be I like I said I have not had an eating disorder but I've witnessed people around me have them and they are damaging okay they are very damaging I know going to bed hungry probably isn't the best thing but that I do think is because I do I I think that part of my anxiety medicine gives me an increased appetite because I am making sure that I do have enough calories a day I, I promise I am doing that I just think my appetite is like abnormally large so I think that's what leads to that I just hope you guys love yourselves I hope you aren't going through what I'm going through. I know being on social media and like seeing girls on TikTok and Instagram, like it can be so hard. If you're going through anything, let's work on loving ourselves together. I'm gonna try to say nice things to myself in the mirror every day. I'm gonna try to get ready more. I'm gonna try to stop wearing stuff like this every day. In my defense, I'm wearing this right now just because it's cold. Let's work on loving ourselves more in 2023. Let's work on healthier habits mentally and physically. I thought I was going to say something to end this more on a positive note, but that's just my story. I think I'll have more of a positive ending soon, but for right now, I'm okay. I'm doing okay, and I'll continue to do better. I love you guys. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you in the next one.